I was telling you, I was just with the Reverend Jesse Jackson and Pastor Frederick Haynes, and he was affable, and he was in a, he was in a good mood. He was laughing and joking, and, and I was listening to him. As his words are a bit fewer and farther in between now. I was standing there thinking of the living history that was sitting in front of me. Really a person who we need to honor and not treat as common while we still got them. So he sent me down a trail. I, I started to watch some of his speeches. He really is one of the greatest orators that our nation has produced. And he got that southern cadence. And I fell on one speech. It was the, his, his speech at the Democratic National Convention in 1988, where he got to the backside of that speech. And he started to go on one of them Negro preacher runs. You, you know, y'all are used to black preaching, but the nation was not. They, he, he turned it on real big, and you can see people crying, and, and their eyes are all open, and their mouths are wide, and, and, and he's repeating a refrain. I understand. Said, you, some of you say to me, hey, I'm on top now. The news reporters are following me. There are writers at, at my door. But when I was born to a teenage mother who was born to a teenage mother, not in the hospital, but in the bed. No writers were at my door. I understand. He, he said, I didn't have a name for the first 12 years of my life. I didn't have a last name. My last name was Jesse Burns because my grandmother gave me her last name. I became Jesse Jackson. He said, I, I didn't have a name. So for those of you who feel like nobody knows your name and you don't have a name at all, I understand. He said, I know what it's like to grow up in the hood. We didn't have wallpaper. We had windbreakers. We would fasten paper to the wall to keep the air from getting on the inside, having to keep our own selves warm. I, I understand. He said, we had no food to eat at 3 o'clock on Thanksgiving. Mama was preparing somebody else's food on the other side of town. And when she came back home at 8 o'clock, we got to eat the scraps. And so if you don't have food to eat, I understand. And even in that, he changed the way that presidential candidates talk to us because it's something to feel like a person who's way up at the top, who's got power and influence and resources, can actually literally identify with people down at the bottom. I understand. I came here this morning to tell you he didn't invent that. Jesus did. When you're going through temptation... And you don't want to ruin your life, but you're pulled in a different direction. Jesus looks at you and says, I understand. When your money is funny and your change is strange and your friends are few, Jesus looks at you and says, I understand. When you don't want to do what God is calling you to do because you know it hurts, it hurts, it hurts. But Jesus says, I understand. And when you find yourself feeling alone and broken like nobody else in the world can relate to you, even the preacher Jesus says, I understand. Wherever you are today, friends, I want you to hear me. Jesus understands. 